Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, special number. Trayo. Thank you, Sister Ara. Great music. Amen. But once again, there is no substitute for the preaching of the Word of God. Please all rise as I call to the pulpit, Brother Peter Moore. I said, come on. Amen. Wow. That was great music. Amen. Talk about 10,000 times 10,000 singing. Amen. That was Baptist singing. That was Baptist singing. I love it. And by the way, I believe. Amen? Amen! I believe! Uh, let's see. Ako, what? That's right. Maniwala. No, no. Ako, pananapalataya. Amen. Let's turn in our Bibles, if you would, over to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, this is not a morning message. This is not a morning message. Here, brother. Hold on for me. This is not a morning message. This is a message for Christians. Amen? Amen? This is a message for Christians. And the Bible says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, are you there? Amen? Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Now what I want you to see is the last part of that verse. Amen? Let's say the last part of that verse. It says, shall reap also sparingly. Say it with me. Shall reap also sparingly. Now look. Do you want that? Do you want little? No. No. God is here to bless you. Amen. Amen. You're a part of a great local church. Amen. Amen. By the way, they sang, uh, I believe, and that settles it. Let me tell you something. It's already settled. Yep. Amen. amen. It's already settled. Whether you believe it or not, it's settled. Somebody say amen. amen. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. It's settled. Now, personally, if you will believe it, if you will believe it, if you will believe it, it will make the difference Amen. because now it's going to work in your life. Amen? Amen? Oh, I'm going someplace. I'm going someplace. I'm going someplace tonight. The thing, the activity, the surrender that changed my life once I got saved was soul winning. I've already told you that. Soul winning. And the second thing Giving. 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 Been a gay. <laughs> Been a guy. <laughs> how are you say it? That's what I said. Shut up. <laughs> okay, how about this? A been a gal. Not just the guys. Not just the guys. How about a been a gal? The girls need to give too, amen? That was a joke. Okay, that was a joke. You, you didn't get that. Been a guy, been a gal, amen? If the coffee, if the coffee is good, amen, amen. it's Baracko, amen? amen? If it's weak, it's Baraka. Anyways, that, that's, that's, another, that's another Filipino joke, amen? Now look, I'm saying you don't, now listen, I'm no different than you, you're no different from me, we're all human beings, amen? amen. But those that will believe that it's settled, and those that will believe that God is able, and those that believe that God can, and those that are moved uh, in their hearts and their lives, in their convictions that say, I believe God can and God will. Amen. They'll give, but they'll give bountifully, and they'll get, but they'll get bountifully. Now, there's a lot of Christians in here that are being blessed bountifully. Why? This is a consecrated church. You can't be in this church and not hear the fundamental, solid, rock, rock rib conviction and the preaching. This is the way you ought to do it. Well, who is he to tell me? Be careful. He's the man of God. Amen? Preaching the word of God 
uh, from the God of gods. And it says here, but I say, this is uh, Paul speaking. He said, I want to teach you something. He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. But he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. You're missing it. If you're, if you're giving it grudgingly, you're giving it willingly. You're giving it by faith. I believe, and that settles it. I believe I'm going to give. I believe I'm going to tithe. I believe I'm going to give a love offering. I believe I'm going to share with others. I believe in missions. I'm going to give. Hey, there's a church planning work I want to give to that. You say, I only got so much. I understand. Give as your purpose in your heart. Give sacrificially. How do you know when you're giving enough? How do you know when you're giving enough? How do you know when you're giving enough? Number one, you're obedient. Tithe. Number two, it hurts. Tithe hurts. Tithe. And then it hurts. Give sacrificially. When I got saved, I'm not bragging. When I got saved, I learned to give bountifully. And God has blessed my life because of that. I promise you. Father, we just ask you to bless this verse tonight. Sweet Holy Spirit, we pray that you'll come in fullness in a great, mighty way. God, help us not to be religious. Help us not to be uh, peripheral or, or, or a simple surface. God, help us to get deep into the word. Help these, your people, to learn. It's not about us. It's not about them. It's about you. And you want them, you want me, you want us to believe and to trust you and let it be settled in our lives to live that way. Pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Wow, I'm uh, jealous about this. Uh, do I got, oh yeah. Uh, I'm jealous about this uh, honey and honeymoon and all the rest of it. My wife, ah, Akeen Mahal Asawa, amen. <laughs> My wife's coming this Friday. She was supposed to be here already. If she was, I guarantee you, I would have been up there checking out the honey and the honeymoon. Amen? And uh, I would have kicked, uh, kicked Pastor Gil Lorraine out of his, and I would have taken his quarters. Amen? No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do it. I'd, I'd have brought her to a nice place. But, you know, it's, it's so great to be a part of a church. Now, church, let's understand something. When you get saved, when Magliktas, when you, when you receive, Tangap Jesu Christo, it's Libra, right? It's free. You're getting born again. You were righteous in your religiousness, self-righteousness. You were righteous in your reasoning, self-righteousness. You were busy in, the, in, in, in maybe the religion, maybe the, you know, some denominational church. You were busy, but you were lost. I was 27, going to hell. Why? I had never been born again. Amen. I was a good Christian by profession. I was a good Presbyterian. I was a good uh, servant serving the Lord, but I wasn't even saved. You know why? Because I didn't belong to a good, fundamental, independent, Bible-believing, sin ain't devil fighting King James Bible Church. When I got underneath Pastor Dean Miller, Matt Miller's daddy, I got convicted. Three months later, I got saved. Somebody say amen. Amen. Saved. Amen. Saved. Now, the Christian life has three parts. When you get born again, you receive Christ as your Savior. Now you're a child of God. Before that, no matter how good you were, Hindi Gawa, no matter how religious you were, Hindi Rileyan, no matter how deep into the church you were, Hindi Simbahan, amen. It's not the church, it's not Mother Mary, it's not the Pope, it's not the pastor, it's not the preacher, it's not the missionary, it's not uh, some sacrament or even a baptism. It is the Lord Jesus Christ saving you as the regalo de Dios, the gift of God, Libra, a free gift that you simply receive, humbling yourself and saying, I deserve hell, but I don't want that. And you call out to him, so simple. Are you saved? Are you saved? Well, then you got born again. Here's the second part of the Christian life. The second part of the Christian life is learning how to live. This is why the independent, fundamental Baptist church is so important. 
You need salvation by grace. You get saved as a Christian. But in the Christian life, how you live needs to be Baptist. Why? Bucket. Why is that so important? Because the Baptists reflect the Bible. The Baptists reflect sacrifice. The Baptists reflect the local church. Amen. And so when you get saved, you need to get into a good, fundamental Baptist church. You need to surrender. You need to obey. You need to submit. You need to learn. You need to start absorbing what's being taught here. Why is he preaching that? How does it apply to me? How can I see Jesus in that? How can I surrender anew and afresh? How can this help me grow? Amen. Growing. What are you doing? You're exercising. Yeah. Amen. You're getting exercise. You're becoming stronger as a Christian. But in your heart, you're carnal still. Amen? You're carnal still, and, and you're saying to yourself, I love you, Lord, but... <laughs> You're afraid to give. You're afraid to give time. You're afraid. Why? Because it's going to cost you. You're, you're, you're afraid to give money. You're afraid to tithe, even though it's disobedience. In fact, you bring a curse upon yourself if you don't give. My Bible teaches me so many principles about finances. And the Bible's teaching us we need to grow. Now, look, will giving money. Well, giving money, if I give this money, can I get saved? No. There's no amount of money you can give to be saved. You can't. Your salvation is precious. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the death, burial, and resurrection. It's the virgin birth, sinless life, powerful ministry. It's the intercession he's making for you as the advocate of First John chapter 2, and verses 1 and 2. He is our advocate, and he's watching over us, and we're saved. Amen. Are you saved? Okay. So you're past this first point. Now you're in your Christian life. Are you a Baptist? Amen. Now, did you get saved because you were a Baptist? No. You don't get saved as a Baptist. Being a Baptist is not going to save you. If you're here tonight and you're consecrated before the Lord as a Baptist, but you've never been born again, you've never received Christ, you know what? You're, this, this message is not for you. This is not a Sunday morning gospel message. This is a message about the Christian life, not about being born again. Are you born again? Give it to me. Amen. If you're born again, say amen. amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Get excited. You should be. It's your salvation. It's eternal. So you're born again. Now you get baptized so you can be a Baptist and you can learn about the Word of God. Why is that Word of God so important? Listen now. Are you listening? The Bible says the Word of God will make you free. Not set you free. When you got saved, you got set free. You got set free from sin. You got set free from damnation. You got set free from uh, the, 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 the lake of fire. You got set free from the devil. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Woohoo! Glory! All things become new! Amen. You get it? You get it? The Bible's telling us that great things happen when you get saved. Amen. The Bible says that when you receive Christ, you become a new creature. You're not lost. You're set free from being lost. You're saved. Amen. You're not going to hell. You're set free from being in hell. You're, you're going to heaven. You're not uh, having to be carnal anymore. You've got the Holy Spirit of God that regenerated you, and now you're set free to be spiritual. You don't have to doubt uh, like the choir up here, like that young lady just singing about uh, the redemption of God. You can get excited about your salvation. And start living it. You don't have to be fleshly. You're set free to be word-centered, word-conquered, word-submitted and surrendered. You don't have to be apathetic. You can now be strong and, and, and moved 
and uh, literally uh, driven by compassion and by uh, wisdom to do God's will. You don't have to be rebellious. You don't have to be stubborn. You don't have to be proud or vengeful. You can live in a, 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 but when did that happen? It happened at the born again experience. But once you get saved, there's going to be a, there's going to be a, something that happens in your life and you're going to have to start obeying and surrendering and doing the will of God. And one of the greatest areas, look, pastor did not ask me to preach this. Pastor, he didn't ask me to preach this. I'm giving you my testimony tonight. Two things changed me after I was saved. Well, did the preaching, the preaching affected me. The ministry, it affected me. But what really made a difference in my life? Look, I'm old and you're young. I'm telling you, if you get involved in soul winning and giving, you're going to grow exponentially. You're not going to be a sparingly Christian anymore. Now you're going to become a bountiful Baptist. Amen. Say that. Bountiful Baptist. Say it. Bountiful Baptist. That's what I want to be. And that's what I am. That's what he is. That's what he is. He is. He is. Noel's not. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> A bountiful Baptist. He is. He's, he's, he's a bountiful Baptist. Bountiful jokes. Joke, joke line. Amen. <laughs> what a privilege to be a part of this great ministry because it's a local church bathed. It's a local church based upon the foundation of God's word. It's a local church with a strong man of God, other men of God backing him up, and the Holy Spirit of God protecting. But most of all, you've got the word of God uh, empowering you and showing you what is truth. Amen. Amen. Now let me just stop for a minute. I'm going to give you a little history lesson. In America, there was people coming from Europe looking for religious freedom. They wanted Libra. They wanted to be free. They wanted liberty. And they came, and they were a part of the United States before it was a nation. And the founding fathers asked them, we want you to get behind us. The Episcopal said, yeah, we'll do it. The Catholics, yeah, we'll do it. All the other denominations, yeah, we'll do it. The Baptists said, no. The Baptists in the United States would not get behind the government. You know why? Because they did not want more oppression like they left from Europe. You understand? There was an inquisition going on where people were being hung upside down, burned at the stake, hanged by a rope, cut up slowly, filleted. I'm talking about great persecution, and the Baptists, they said, no, we won't be behind a government that's going to be oppressive. So that's why both in the United States Constitution and, did you know, in the Philippine constitutional law, that all men are created equal and that there is, that there is, are you listening, that there is freedom of religion. Who gave us that? The Baptists. Where did they get it from? Oh. Biblia. The word of God. The Bible says the truth will make you free and you'll be free indeed. The Bible says that only with God will you get liberty. Now what does that mean for you? What, what is the application here? You, you, you want liberty? You want true freedom? Oh, not just freedom to be free, but to be free from the flesh, free from selfishness, free from this worldly uh, passions and, and the things that will destroy. You want to be free? You get into the book. The Bible says God will make you free. Amen. When you got saved, set you free. Amen. Set you free. But if you want to become a Christian, now the third part, 
is what she was singing about, what the, what the choir said. We're going to go to heaven one day. That's the third part. But first part saves you from the penalty of sin. Come on, you're on. Amen? And then the second part saves you from the power, the lack of uh, kasalanan. Makasalanan, we're still sinners. We still have this flesh. Hello? I don't care how spiritual you are, you're going to still be tempted, especially you younger men. There's going to be morality. There's going to be other kind of tests for you, and you've got to succeed. How will you do it? Through the church, through the Bible, through a walk with God, Holy Spirit of God's strength. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that this book brought freedom, true freedom, to America. It wasn't the politicians. Politics defined, if you've gone to college and studied politics at all, politics divine, defined is the art of compromise. Yeah. You see that, don't you? Yeah. As, a, as an officer in, a, in, in the Navy or some other thing, you're always trying to be careful you don't cross lines or offend people because everybody's got to be happy. And I, I'm not against that. But politics is not Christianity, and neither should Christianity be involved in politics. Nope. Yeah, you've got to run. You've got to support them. And I understand you should be behind. But politics is separate from this church. And you should never follow a pastor involved in politics. You just don't do that. You let the other men, let him, let the other men get out there and, and influence the, the, uh, the, the politicians. So for you to find liberty, you've got to find the spirit. The Bible says where the spirit of God is, it says it. I think it's, I didn't write this one down, but I think it's 2 Corinthians 2.18. Let's look back there. Um, let's see. Oh, I think it's right here. Um, Verse 17 of chapter 3. Here it is. Now the Lord is that spirit. Oh, we're just, we were just in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're now we're, we're in chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. Now the spirit is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. No spirit, no liberty. Now look, listen. You got saved. You're going to heaven, whatever. Whatever you do, you're still going to heaven. Amen. Amen. Hey, you got that in your head? Paputa salangit, no matter what. Lahat, everyone's saved. Everyone magliktas. We're going to heaven. You say, what if I do something really bad? Then you did something really bad as the son of God. And you'll suffer for it here on earth. But you will not suffer for your sins in heaven. Jesus paid it all. Amen. You'll suffer loss. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you will suffer loss. And you'll suffer loss here. But you'll never suffer hell. That's what Jesus Christ came and died for. You, listen, I'm not just talking, I'm setting a foundation for you to understand giving. You don't give because you have to, grudgingly. You don't give because you feel like you better or the pastor will bother you from guilt or regret. You give because you're excited to see what God is going to give back to you. Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. And by the way, if you're selfish, you're stuck in money, you know what that is? That's the mammon. That's the flesh of the world. And you think you just don't want to give your money. You think. And it's the way we are, deceived. You think, I'll hang on to my money. I'll still be a good Christian. I'll still be a soul winner. Uh, I'll still go to Bible college, but I'm going to hang on to this. You can't. That's hypocrisy. You give yourself up. You surrender yourself. You, you just say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. You give it all up. You just lay it all on the altar. Amen. And that includes the money. Amen. Now, that's only 50, so you guys leave it alone, okay? If it was 1,000, these guys would be right now wrestling for it. Amen? No, I'm just telling you, we can look forward to heaven when we get free from the presence of sin, the presence of this world. The Bible says you're going to go through just a, just through a veil. 
just through a veil of sleep, and then you're going to awake, and it's going to be two hundredths of a second. You're going to die. It's appointed that a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. The judgment isn't for your sin. The judgment is what you did with Jesus Christ back there. You received him as your personal Savior, and we all said? Huh? Amen? Aren't you glad you're saved? Now you got a Christian life. One day you're going to die and you're going to go to heaven. And the Bible says you won't be judged for your sin. You'll be judged for your spirit works. What you did in, in God's power. What, how you surrendered your sacrifice. And if you haven't, you're going to suffer loss. Now, are you still Salangit? Yes. Come on, help me. I'm not even preaching yet. I'm setting a foundation so you understand how important this is. You're still going to heaven. There's nothing I'm going to say here. If you don't give money, you're not going to heaven. That's stupid. Amen? Now look, we're sheep. Sheep are called tupa, right? In, in the Tagalog, tupa. That just sounds dumb, you know? Uh, tupa, you know? <laughs> sheep are dumb. You know why? Sheep will follow somebody. This is why Jesus said, choose you this day whom you'll serve. You can't serve two masters. Amen. Pastor Ed Lorena says that's why you can't have two wives. You can't serve two masters. Amen. And by the way, if you have two wives, you're going to be punished. Two mother-in-laws. Amen. <laughs> so I want you to think about this. We're not talking about Kali Tassan here. You're saved. Amen. Not a morning message. We're not talking about going to heaven. That's going to happen. I'll go before he will. Because I'm older and I'll probably die in 10, 15 years. He's a young man. He's gonna well, not young, middle-aged. <laughs> and, of course, your wife's in medical, right? So I'll give you another five years. But anyways, I'm just saying he's going to die too. We're all going to die. So what really matters, oh, what really matters after salvation? Consecration. Consecration. Consider this. Think about this. Behold and meditate on this. God sowed. God sowed his son into the world. What does that mean? For God so loved the world, he what? He gave his only begotten son. Paghahasig, right? Isn't that it? Sowing? Paghahasig. You know, God sowed it in the world. And what has God reaped? God has reaped a, a salvation that only glorifies and magnifies him and that will only bring him glory. Not only that, the Bible says there will be 10,000 times 10,000 at least. Well, let's see. What's 10,000 times 10,000? That's a million. And then it says thousands of thousands. Well, you better go back to Daniel 7.10 because it talks about a thousand times the 10,000. 10, That's a billion. There's going to be a billion angels, elders, Jews, Christians, that Jews that got saved, Christians, and we're going to all be together in heaven. It's going to be a time. Amen. But you know what? It's too late to change what you did here on earth. Amen. Amen. I want to check and make sure my 50 pesos are still there. These guys hadn't grabbed it. Amen. I'm watching them. I'm watching you guys. Yeah, see? This one guy in the front row is going like this, you know. <laughs> Luckily, Noel's way back there. Otherwise, he'd probably be gone by now. Amen. So the Bible says that God sowed his son. He sent not a son in the world to condemn the world, but that, through, uh, but that the world would be saved through him. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. By who? By the truth. Who is that? The only way. There's only one name under heaven whereby you must be saved. So God gave his only begotten son, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and we are excited as saved people about that. 
I'm going to ask you something. God gave you his son. And you can't let go of some money. You can't let go of some time. You can't let go of some talents and some abilities you have. You can't be a part of what he died for, the local church, and sacrificially care for this place. Yes, you can, and that's why this is a great church. And so what we know is God is reaping. Uh, Pag-a-ani, right? Is that right? Pag-a-ani? Pag-a-ani. You know why? Because Luan, Lai, Lai, Lai Unen, that's it. Lai Unen, purpose, amen? God created everything first, the purpose to be saved, and then to grow. You are in one of the greatest churches, not just in the Philippines, in all the world. And you don't know that. You don't know that. You're just sitting here looking around. You're just looking at a church that's, you know, busy and excited. But, well, so what? It's a, it's a church. It's not just a church. I travel all over the world. I've traveled the United States from Maine all the way down to Sarasota, Florida, across to San Diego. I've never seen a church like this, not in America. You say, how about Brother Hiles? Brother Hiles is in heaven, if you don't know. And that church hit the dirt and is rebuilding underneath the able leadership of Brother Wilkerson. But I'm telling you something. This is an unusual church. And you're here. And to much is given, much is required. God has sown his son. He's given so much. And you're not going to give back? Look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Just back a couple chapters. Come on. Turn over there real quick. Don't get bored. If you get a nosebleed for my English, just wipe it off. Amen. Just wipe the nosebleed. If I speak in Tagalog, just wipe the blood out of your ears. Amen. And it says in 2 Corinthians 5, one of my favorite chapters, it says in verse 14, For the love of Christ constraineth us. Okay, see, no. Who's this speaking? Who wrote, who wrote 2 Corinthians? Now, of course, the Holy Spirit did through Paul, through Paul's experience. Because we thus judge that if, what, Jesus Christ, if one died for all, that's Jesus Christ, then, as a result, the expectation, the uh, final point is, all were dead. Except that Jesus died, and that he died for all, that they which live should not live henceforth unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Now, let me tell you something. Listen now, listen. This is not a church where you just come, you sit here, you, you, know, you go through the motions, and you leave. You're a part of a body here. Just like he's got a body, and he's a part of his body, you're in his church, and you're a part of the body, and you need to get busy in the body and allow God to use you in a great way. And if you will sow yourself, sow your family, sow your time, sow everything else, and it'll be, you'll see it when you give your money. Now look, you can give a lot of things. The hardest thing it is for a, for a human being to give is the money. I don't know why that is, but it's true, and God knows that. He says it in the Bible. And look at it says there in verse 16. Wherefore, henceforth know we uh, no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now henceforth know we him no more. Because why? He's rose up and he's in heaven. But we still know him when he was in the flesh. We don't know what he is in heaven. We'll see him as he is one day. But we know how he lived here. He didn't have a house he didn't have a vehicle. He uh, hardly had anything. He invested everything he had, everything he was, everything he gave up for you. Amen. And you can't give something back. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, but that's right there. You got saved. You're in Christ. He is a new creature. All things are passed away, you're set free. Behold, all things are become new. That's the Christian life. But that's not any Christian life. That's the bountiful Baptist life. And look, look I'm indebted 
to the Lord, of course. I am very indebted to my pastor, Pastor Dean Miller. He taught me tithing. He taught me giving. He taught me to hurt sacrificially, financially. Give it, give it, give it, give it. And buddy, I had a lot of money when I went to that church. When I got saved, I don't know. Amen? So leave my 50 pesos alone right there. I don't have much money. Leave that alone. But I'm going to tell you something. I learned to give. I gave and gave and gave. What a privilege. I was so excited. Why? I just believe my preacher. I just believe the Bible. I just couldn't see how as 27-year-old that just got saved would want to hold on to anything in that my Savior had saved me from so much. Amen. Amen. And look, he sowed his son and he reaped the church. He reaped the 10,000 times 10,000. He reaped the, our glory, our praise. He reaped a fulfilled prophecy. He reaped eternity. He reaped something forever. And that is kalikdasan, that's salvation. Now, let me just teach you, and here's the lesson. Let me just teach you about giving, and I promise you this will change your life. Two things change my life. Get out there and go soul winning. Even if you can't give your money, you tightwad, you selfish person, you miser, get going on soul winning, amen? amen. That's the first thing. I, I sign every Bible, be a soul winner. Be a soul winner. I don't say give money. I say be a soul winner. I'm not looking to get money out of you. I don't, I'm not, this church is not how I make it. And by the way, pastor doesn't need your money. All the church doesn't really even need your money. God will provide for this great church. You need to give your money. Amen. And God said, he sowed his son. Think with me. God, the Father, God, the Almighty. He gave his only begotten son. Oh, we had we had the glory of God become flesh and dwell among us. Uh, we got to see this great example. He established his church. Then he was crucified. He was beaten. He was spit on. He was mocked. Uh, he had a bat put on his head, crown of thorns, whipped till the flesh was coming off. Then spikes drawn into his hands and feet and then thrown into a grave. And the disciples forsook him, thinking it was all over. It wasn't over. Amen. You know why? What? When you put that money in the pulpit, I mean, in the plate, it's not over. You're looking at that money. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> it's coming back. Amen. But you got to believe. Amen. Amen. You got to believe. Amen. You've got to believe. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, let's turn back there real quick. Now, I'm going to go through this very quickly. I know it's in English, but it'll help you. It says, but this I say then. It says, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall be a bountiful Baptist, shall reap unto, uh, also bountifully. Now, look, every man according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give. Purpose in your heart, like the choir saying, I believe, and it's going to settle it for my finances. I believe it's going to settle it to tithe. I'm going to give my 10% and a little above that. Then I'm going to give an offering. I'm going to look around for somebody that needs help. Uh, I'm going to help these church plants. Oh, the great vision of your pastor up there in the northern parts uh, by Baguio and Tarlock and Ramos and all these other places, building and battling and seeing souls saved and churches built. How can you not be involved? So exciting. Look at what it says in verse 8. And God is able. Everybody say it. And God is able. Say it. And God is able. If you will give bountifully, I'm telling you, God is able to give it back. You say, how do you know that? I know that scripturally. I know that uh, 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 transactionally, experientially, experientially, I've seen it. I know that from looking at nature. Oh, nature. Oh, I forgot about nature. That's the way God does it. 
you take three or four seeds and you break up the ground and you put three or four seeds in and what happens? Something grows. It's called a plant. And that plant becomes fruitful and what was three seeds now is thousands and thousands of seeds. Oh, now we're going someplace. You say, I don't know if God is able. Well, go, go plant a few seeds and see what happens. The plant comes up. Amen? And the plant gives fruit. The plant gives seeds. The plant gives oxygen. Amen? And the Bible says that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Now, I don't care if you understand English or not. What he's saying is, God will give it back. Amen. He might give it back in heaven. He might give it back here. He might give it back differently. I believe, and it's settled. No matter how I get it back, I'm going to continue to give, and God will give it to you. Now look, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you. I gave it up. When I got saved, I dropped out of law school, started going to Bible college. I started giving to help the, the college, giving to help the academy, giving to help the poor, the bus ministry. Where else can I give, Pastor? I'm not bragging. I was excited about what happened. I got saved. And I got into Bible college, and I started to learn the Bible from a saved standpoint. I couldn't wait to see what was next on the agenda. And I lived sacrificially, giving and giving, sold the house we were in, moved over to a little apartment. My wife and I had a bit of a nervous breakdown moving in this little place. I mean, I had just sold my quarter of a million dollar house up in uh, Minnesota, and I was down with this beautiful house overlooking this great mountain range called Pikes Peak. And I had everything, but I wasn't saved. And when I got saved, I said, I'll give it all to him. And, listen now, I was in Bible college, and it was tough, because I gave it all. And then pretty soon I didn't have anything left to give, but I kept giving what I didn't even have. And you know what? I got a phone call one time. And this guy said, hey, I just, I see your family, I see what you're doing. He says, I bought you a brand new van. Now, hold on, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you give money and somebody's going to give you a brand new van. I'm not saying that. But I'm telling you, God's going to do something. Amen. 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 God's going to do something. God's going to do something. God's going to do something. God is not a debtor to any man. You give to the poor, God will give back to you. And by the way, that's Proverbs uh, 19.17. I'm not going to go back there. But it says if you'll give to the poor, he, will, he God, will repay you. Amen. Look, folks, I'm very passionate about this. I'm passionate about a lot of things, but giving? I'm passionate about it not because I want more money to be given to the church, because I want you to get free and be free indeed. I want you to be free. Yeah, but, but pastors got all this stuff, and these other guys, they give. And now look, at God's given them all that, and I got nothing. Self-pity is going to get you nowhere. You're feeling sorry for yourself, and what you're doing is you're judging God, saying, you haven't blessed me yet, you're not going to bless me, I don't believe you. Oh, that, my friend, is where you get in trouble. You just give and believe God to give it back, and he will. He always does. Look at verse, uh, look at verse number uh, 8. He says, and ye always having all sufficiency to all things may abound to every good work. God is saying, I'm opening opportunities for you. Every one of you got an opportunity to give. Give in soul winning. Give in area leadership. Give in uh, discipleship. Give time to these little kids. Give time to the older kids. Give time to anybody you can to disciple them, to bring them into the church, to build the church. This is the church age. If you'll do it, you'll be a bountiful Baptist. Amen. Oh, I love verse 9. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Wow. Do you understand that? Uh, my watch is saying, did you fall? No, I'm okay. Put it up. I'm sorry. If you hit the pulpit with the watch, it's 
are you okay or did you just die? No, I didn't die. Now look, what that verse is saying is, what do you have I haven't given you? God is saying this. Oh, what do you have? What's in your bank account? What's in your arm? What's in your leg? What's in your heart? What's in your church? What's in your house? What's in your car that God hasn't given to you? Hello. It all belongs to him. Psalms over and over again says, all the fullness thereof belongs to God. Amen. Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? That I can get something God gave me and say, okay, now it's mine. Get out of my way. You don't say that to God. You don't say that to God and not get the blessing. Now look, God is saying, I've given you everything. Why can't you learn to give? Why can't you learn to sacrifice? Why can't you? We need Christians tonight. They're going to hit this altar and say, I don't understand exactly what that pastor was preaching. He preached in English. He preached too fast. <clears throat> it's, it's his experience. I don't understand it. But I know this. I know God. I can, I can trust you. I know God. If I'll just give it. I know God. If I'll just release it. I know you're going to empower me. You're going to bless me. There's going to be new avenues. There's going to be new plateaus. I'm going to grow as a Christian. I'm going to become a bigger person. Amen. 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 Look at verse 10. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, multiply your... What is that saying? He's saying the same thing again. Don't you understand? Whatever you got, God has given to you in the first place. Being enriched in everything, verse 11, to all bountifulness. Now look, look, I want to make this personal to you like it's personal to me. God wants to affect you. God wants to change you. God wants to transform you. God wants to make something out of you. But if you're hanging on to that money, you're hanging on to your time, you're hanging on to your house as yours. If you're hanging on to your career, I'll do anything, but I won't give up my career you are making a big mistake. Amen. You give, and it should be given to you. Can I, can I trust these guys to leave that money, or should I take it since I'm down here? Okay, I'll, I'll trust them. Amen. <laughs> now look, I'm telling you, this is so important. Now look at verse 12 real quickly. It says here in verse 12 of chapter 9, For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. God is saying, hello, wake up call. If you don't give, I will take care of it, but not like I would if you would give. Because watch, when you give, he gives back to you. Now you have more to give more. Now the church is growing. If you don't give, God will take care of you. God will give it. God will take care of this, but not like you want. It's going to be sparingly. Why is this church so large? Why is this church so blessed? Why is this church growing? Why is it multiplying so many places? Because you're giving, 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 giving. Now, look at, let's just go to verse 13. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration. Now, look, <clears throat> Christian life is an experiment, okay? It just is. Now, spirituality, salvation, none of that's an experiment. But your giving is, watch. This is mass. This has weight. There's the law of gravity. If I let go of this, it's an experiment, right? Is this an experiment? Let's see if gravity really works. Ready? Whoa, it works. Now, there are places in the universe where there's no gravity. You can go to NASA in America, and you can get in these, these anti-gravity things, you can put the, and the book's going to stay there. So you can violate that law, but not the law of giving. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Giving. If you give, you get back. It's the law. But... You have to experiment with it. I'm asking you, 
Start giving. Start giving. Start giving. Start giving. Quit being such a tightwad. Quit doing it sparingly. Give. Husband and wife get together. Pray. 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 Ask God to help you to give more and more and more. The only way we get the riches of reaping is the obedient sacrifice of sowing. Look, the Bible's replete with it. If you'll just buy an experiment, try out, God will not disappoint you. Yes, it's going to be an experiment to you, so to speak. The Bible calls it that, but it's really not an experiment. You're just going to watch God do it. God is able. God's not a liar. God said he'll do it. He'll do it. Amen. Now, I want you to think about this. Are you listening? When we reap, what we sow, it's because we sowed. We reap what we sow. That is a principle. Say it with me. What you sow, you reap. Say it. What you sow, you reap. Husbands, you sow anger. You sow uh, uh, putting people down and, and immaturity and security. You're going to reap it. Why? Why do you want to do that? Why don't you learn from the other men of the church how to be a good father? Amen. Amen. You kids, you mess with drugs, you mess with other things, guess what? You're going to reap a whirlwind. Why? Fuck it. Don't do that. You sow, you give, you'll reap. Amen. That's, what, that's a principle of God's word. That is a principle. You don't have to question. That always happens. In, 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 other, in other religions, they call it they call it uh, yin yang. They call it uh, karma. Why? Because it's a principle of God. What you sow, you reap. Say it with me. What you sow, you reap. Okay, listen now. Number two, you reap more than you sow. Always. 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 Pastor Miller taught me this. Why don't you let me teach you this? I mean, your pastor is teaching you. You know it already. Why don't you internalize it tonight? Why don't you make it yours? Why don't you get ownership of this? You always, 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 no exceptions. You always reap more than you sow. You sow three seeds, you get a thousand seeds. Amen. You take the seeds out of an apple, you plant it, you get four or five trees, you're going to have thousands of apples. Okay, here it goes. This is it. But we still reap in the same proportion we sow. You say, what do you mean? Well, I sowed three seeds. Mm -hmm. I get three plants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, those plants are going to have a lot of seeds. Yeah, sure. But what if I sowed ten plants? That's the proportion. So you give $5, and that's sacrificial. That's good. And you'll get more back. Somehow, some way, I don't know. I'm, and I'm, I'm not putting God in a box. I'm not a prosperity gospel. I'm not saying you give and God's going to make you wealthy. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying there's a principle here that changed Pete Mord's life. Hey, I was 20 years at a church. I had trusted God. I went up and gave everything, built a church. My wife and I, the Lord built it through us. 20 years, and God said, go to the Philippines. I said, what? I've got seven kids. At that time, six grandkids. Why do I want to go to the Philippines? Now i got 14, Apo. Amen? Why do I want to go? I'm not going to go to the Philippines. And God said, go. Okay, I'll go. What a great experience. What a great blessing. This is the greatest part of my life right now I'm living now. These are the glory days. We still reap in proportion to what we sow. We reap after we sow. Oh, God, you give it to me now, and I'll give you some of it back. That's not how it works. The just shall live by faith. Oh, the just shall live by faith, amen? By faith, give it. Sow a reaping. Reaping more. Reaping proportionate. Reaping after we sow. Not only that, sowing is a command. It's not an option. Just like soul winning is not an option. And I was taught that 
You know, I mean, we think to ourselves, well, I've, I've, God says, go ye in all the world. He tells me to go, but I don't have to give. That's not true, and the devil's deceiving you because he doesn't want you to grow like the other Christians here have grown that have learned to give. Amen. 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 It's so simple. Reaping, reaping, pagaani is a blessing. It's the reward. It's what God gives back to you. Now, let me tell you something. God is not a debtor to any man. Amen. God's not a debtor to you. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the thousand hills. He owns the air and all the rights above it. He owns all the minerals, gold, and oil, and everything below it all the way to China. He owns it. It's all his. Reaping is the reward. Hey, do you want a reward? Do you want to see your faith rewarded? I do. Your pastor does. The staff members, the family of pastor, the, the men of God and ladies of God in this church that have seen God bless, they want that for your life, but you'll never have it till you learn to give. Amen. Amen. Not sowing will steal your Blessings from God. Not sowing, not giving, not releasing will steal from you. What God wanted for you, you can't have. Not because of God, not because of your pastor, not because of other Christians. You! You! Oh, that's not all. That's not all. That's not all. You have a wife, right? No? You're still looking. Okay. Who's got a wife? You got a wife. Is that her? Ooh, sorry. Okay. If you suffer, she suffers. Oh, you mean to tell me if I don't give, not only will I suffer, but my wife will? Oh, yeah. Oh, hold it. I had seven children. They're going to suffer, too. Oh, how about my 14 grandkids? They're suffering, too. I'm not bragging. Every one of my children are very successful. Why? Because I gave. I gave to them. I gave to the Lord. I gave whatever. I, I just wanted to give it. I learned about that. I'm telling you, I wish I could get this across to you. I wish I, wish I could convince you. Lastly, souls saved is how we sow into the church. A wise soul winner sees God's design. As we sow into the church, souls, the church grows. As the church grows, the church is blessed. As the church is blessed, more blessings come. That's one of the great things about soul winning. God is able. Amen? All right, amen. Uh, you two guys, come up here. Come on, free. You two guys, come on. All right. What do you got? What do you got? Come on. Give it to me. What do you got? Give it to me. Benegay. Come on. What do you got in your pocket? You got any money? No money? Okay. He's giving me this. Oh, hey, you got a pen. He's giving me a pen. Amen? Amen? He gave it to me. Okay. Oops, sorry. All right. Good. Thank you. All right. Go sit down. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so I'm going to give you something back, okay? There's some feed of crackers, amen. And here's 100 pesos. Now hold it, listen, listen, we're having fun. I'm done. No more preaching. No more preaching. No more preaching. We're just... Looking at the point, okay? Now, is that worth as much as your pen was? Would you rather have your pen or that? You, pen, you want your pen back? Huh? Or do you want to give that to him? Give it to him. Just give it away. Give it. Just give it to him. He, what a selfish person. He didn't want to give it. Amen. Oh, 200 pesos. Oh. 
You get a package of these for 60 pesos. How did he get 200? Because God is not held to this world. Amen. What do you got you want to give me? Oh, he's not just giving me the feed of crackers, amen. He's giving me the hundred. Well, let's see what happens, amen. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Oh, he got a hundred back. So he got to give the feed of crackers to him. He gave a hundred, but he got a hundred back, amen. But then a little later, God watches his faith and says, let me give you another. Oh, hold it. And then he says, and remember this that you gave me? I just was testing you on this because I want you to have this. Oh, hold it. What do you got? What do you got in your hand right now? What you gave plus 200. Amen? I'm... He can't speak to Galog. I'm translating, amen? Here, look. Look, 200. Now, let me ask you a question. Watch this now. Are you ready to give that back? Yeah. Oh, he's ready to give that back. Are you ready to give it back? Yes, sir. Okay. Should we let him give it back? Okay. How much do you want to give me? <laughs> okay. He's giving me 200 back, amen? And that was great. He was really worth, like you said, his faith, amen? Okay, here you go. One, two, three pesos. That's what he's got for now. That's what he's got for now. But God's not going to leave you there, amen? Amen? What do you want to give me back? Oh, he says, take it, take it. Why? Because he's watching this transaction and he's saying, it's getting better. Hold it, it's not getting better. He had 200 pesos and now all he's got is three. But see, you gave to God and God gives to this guy. Now he's got 203. Oh, but how about you? You had 200 and you gave it and then that guy was helped and then what happens to you? Oh, you get 100? Well, that's not bad. You're not left waiting. And then... What happens after that? Well, God gives it again. Are you ready? Are you ready? 500. Amen. Are you ready to give something? Wow, give it all Sunday, amen? And then God gives it all back to him. You see, because it doesn't, what, the possessions, they don't mean anything to God. He owns it all. You see, he wants you to grow in faith. When I first was saved, listen now, when I was first saved, I hated soul winning. Why? Bucket. Why go soul winning? Stupid. I didn't see any value in it. But I started going. And pretty soon, I was walking away from houses crying as I saw people were lost. Lost! Voila, la, la, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> voila, voila, nothing, no salvation. <laughs> Shut up, leave me alone. Well, look, pretty nice. Amen. Pretty good. Amen. All right, uh, should we keep going or you want to stop? You <laughs> said keep going. What do you want to stop or keep going? Keep going. Oh, keep going. <laughs> Amen. But, 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 peril, I mean, peril, 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 peril. What if you give this back and you get something less? With God, you sowed bountifully, so you're going to get bountifully. Yep. Yes, sir. And it may be seeming like you got spar sparingly right now. Uh, you're a bountiful Baptist. God's going to give it back. Amen? God's going to give it back. Amen. <clears throat> now, are you ready to give that back? Okay, let's see. Give it back. All right. Wow, look at all this. Look what I got. Amen? And then let's see what God's going to give them. Well, that's all God's got left. Amen? It seems. I don't see anything else. Nope, it's all gone. Oh, but 
God's got a billfold, amen? <laughs> and in the billfold, can you come up here and help me? Can you come up here and help me? Hold all these great gifts you've given me. God is going to take it, and then God's going to look and say, I'm going to give him something bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, God, God will give it back. God will give it back. Now, look, folks, I'm saying you've watched this, you've laughed, and you're thinking to yourself, if it was only that simple, it is that simple. I am old. You are young. I've been saved many, many years. I've been in the ministry many, many years. Pastored uh, 35 years. I, I've, I've been in the Philippines a long time. I'm telling you. I've seen it. I'm not smarter than you. I've just seen it more. If preacher was here, he'd be yelling, amen. Look, a thousand pesos. What did you come up here with? Where's that stuff? Okay. Amen. So, here. You get this back. This back. And you were hoping you get this back. That went to this guy. But what did you start with? What did you start with? Huh? Just a pen. What did I do with that pen right here? I want that pen. <laughs> I don't know what. I, I think I ate it. I ate the pen. <laughs> well, here. I'll tell you what. How about I give you back? Oh, How about if I give you back a zebra pen? It's, uh, it's specifically for writing in Bibles. It won't bleed through. It's a very nice pen. These pens are very expensive. What if you got that back instead of your pen? Would that be okay? Oh. <laughs> you see, now let me say this, and I'm done. I'm, let me say this. You can't outgive God. Amen. You, 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 me. You can't outgive God. I gave and gave and gave and gave. I didn't know what God was giving me back, but it didn't matter. I wanted to give it to God. I didn't give it grudgingly. I gave it bountifully to God. I said, it's all yours. You saved me. It's all yours. And now I've got kids that have married great marriages, and they're making tens of thousands, even millions of dollars right now. Why? They're sucking off the blessing of their daddy. And I'm glad. Not only that, they're saved. And they're witnessing to my grandkids. And the kingdom is being built through giving. You can't outgive God. Amen? Can you get that for me? Thank you. Oh, here, let me give you this. Thank you for that. Oh, hey, hey, let me give you this too, okay? Appreciate you doing that. You say, God, I don't hardly have any money. God has everything. God has everything. What did you come up here with, this? What did you come up here? A pen. A pen that costs probably one-tenth this does. But you get all this. Why? Because you gave. Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want God's blessing? Do you want your children blessed? You say, where does it say that? You better read Malachi 3. The children are blessed. The business is blessed. The country is blessed. The church is blessed. Thank you, guys. Amen. Uh, I'm just kidding. I want it back. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it fun to learn? Amen? Amen? It's fun to learn. Two things. Well, well, two things changed my life. What were they? So winning and, and what? And, and giving. Let's be Bountiful Baptist. Amen? Let's be Bountiful Baptist.
Amen. Alam niyo po yung sinabi niya, ligtas na tayo, anong dapat ikakatakot natin? Ilan sa atin may pera pa sa bangko? Ilan sa atin may mga tinatago pa tayong for emergency na pera? And yet, pag nagbibigay tayo sa church, 